can't believe I got internet all the way out here. Hey everybody, it's Pat with Farland Classic Restoration. Happy Farland Friday. We are out in front of the shop this morning on the far side of the building, hanging out with our 560SL. This one recently came in. Lots of cleanup and detailing on this one. A little over 60,000 original miles. I believe this was the generation they moved over to the V8s. So this one's got a little more get up and go than the earlier 280s we see much more frequently. We'll check out the interior. We've got this cool chrome trim. Lots of originality in this one. Over 10, you got the big chunky 80s wheel. This one is from 87. Nice solid door close there. Looking good out in the Colorado sun today. So we'll head inside. We'll head over to the metal side of the shop to get started and then we'll spin around to the detailing side in a bit. First up is one that recently got painted. The 1968 Porsche 912 soft window Targa. Just got this one all sprayed. Making sure we got through the roll bar there. Of course, we've got our identification tags, all that stuff cleaned up, looking nice and pretty. As this one goes through the full restoration. Forgive me there, bouncing my elbow off of something. All cleaned up. We got to get the jute sound editing, all that stuff in there. But this one's quickly coming together. This is one of our very favorite clients we deal with quite frequently here in the shop. So, one of the favorites. Other than that, we have this automatic 280. Getting back into the six cylinder Mercedes stuff. This is one of my favorite color combos here in the shop right now, that dark gray over the lighter gray. And as we've pointed out before, the dashboard is always color matched to the exterior. So Let's see, we're working on door cards. We got this one all torn through, clearing everything out. And there's that inline six hanging out up front. On these ones, you can always check down here. This is your option tag, all that kind of stuff. Got your color code, which on this one, I believe is 180G. Pretty common Mercedes color here. That'd be the, the light gray all throughout. Not that darker gray. Again, you can see we're still cleaning this one up. Got some paint chipping, some wear on this, this hood. Definitely seen some better days. That's what it's in for. Cleaning it up. Lots of uh, mechanical repair on this one. Working with some suspension and a little bit of rust repair on the underside. So, spin around to our 66 912. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Our awesome interior guy, Juan, has been getting this one all installed. You can see he's got plenty of stuff done back through here. Getting the door card. He also did the headliner a few, probably a week back now. And that dash, so. This is a 66, that's it. 66, 911. Polo red is the color. Before they had even introduced guards red. And 66 would have also been two years before they introduced the Fook style wheels. Fooks. So you have that older style wheel on that one with the hubcaps. Here's our 190 SL working on that top. Windshield getting ready to go in. We got Clint working away over here. He's doing the install on this engine on the 280 SL. You can see we also got some new brakes. All that hardware looking good. 
as well as up top here. Lots of originality, getting all our copper and everything coated correctly. Looking cool. And a pile of parts here. I believe that all belongs to this new one. Our Mustang. This one actually came in as a pair with another Mustang. Uh, one was the parts car. This convertible is going to be the car we are doing plenty of restoration work on. You can see we're pulling everything, documenting all those parts, windshields, goodies, all that sort of stuff. Looks like that is our engine. Definitely will need some looking over, cleaning up. But we got that one pulled. Another funny one a few of us guys here in the shop were talking about is we were looking through and noticed these, I want to call them bump stops here in the suspension. Basically, they stop the spring from compressing down. Looks like we've got one, two, three, four on this side. And as we spun around and we're checking it out over here, try not to bump into anything as we go through, this side just had one. So a little bit different spring rates there. Something we were glad to find. Good little joke between the guys here in the shop. A few of us think it might have been a race car. So just turning on the one side. Got to be a little more. Um, it would be inverted, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> if you were racing this on, let's say, like a big left track, you would want all your bump stops on the inside, I would think. But I may be incorrect there. I don't know my racing well enough. Maybe the outside, because you've got more suspension travel out there. So yeah, that, that's, that feels right. We'll call it the race car, the Mustang race car. Kind of a unique color, kind of a greeny black. I'm trying to come up with a good name there. That, that kind of captures it. And some really unique wheels. Me and parts guy Aaron were chatting about these ones and these ones both looking cool on here. Kind of a Ken Block style, you know? Scoot back and get the whole thing. Plenty of work to be done on the Mustang there. Through here, we have plenty of mechanical Porsche bits, lots of the 356 stuff. All this is going through blackening, that kind of stuff. You can see we've got our classic manuals, how to fix our 356s. Those are worth their weight in gold. Got some, oh, this is our uh, firewall wiring, getting everything through, making sure it's all clear and going back the way it came apart. So over here, trying to remember what this Porsche is. We've got so many going on. This is our 84 Carrera going for the electrification. So. Mario recently got through all the bodywork on that one. It looks like next up we'll be getting ready for paint and a little more install. So just waiting on our painter to have a little time. Speaking of paint, this one recently came back. This one has been in the shop for quite a few years. This is a Sunbeam Tiger Mark 1. I, I want to say it's the 260, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I know early stuff was, later stuff was 289. I want to say the early stuff was 260. So, this one we've been quite busy, so this actually, the body work on this one was done by our friend Michael Todd. Hey. Knocked out some awesome body work on here, looking nice and straight. So in terms of the ivory, would you go with this Sunbeam Tiger or our 190 we're getting ready to get finished up? That one's over on the other side, so we will go give that a peek. Once we're through here, you may have noticed this one sitting here, the last, uh, probably last live stream. Um, this is our 280 SE Cabriolet. This came in in a leaf green color over black and I want to say a cognac interior. Can't remember. Um, but you can see back here, we cut out some of the bodywork. We had plenty of rust and it had been improperly repaired previously. So let's see if I can find our new panel. I don't see it sitting right here, but I did see that one come in this week. So that's where we're heading next. We'll be lining all of that up, getting our body lines all squared away. You can see here's our corner. Cut through here, all the way down along here. Looking at the wheel well there, but 
We've got the cabriolet here, and we do have the ivory coupe getting ready to go up for sale over in the showroom. So if you are a 3.5 280 SE enthusiast, definitely go check that out over on our site here at farlandcars.com or our recent Instagram video. We'll also have some cool shots of that one. And a YouTube video. We got all sorts of content on that classic. Over here is our 72 Porsche 911 RSR uh, tribute car. I'm sorry, not RSR, uh, Carrera RS. We can see up here, we've got the old school battery boxes. That was something I had never seen on the older Porsches before. Uh, I've also heard many of the race cars use this as a ballast system to add a little bit of weight for uh, weight distribution when out on track, right? 911s are notorious for being a little light in the nose. So. This one is very cool, but we do have our panel covered up there. Don't want to be giving away all the secrets on this tribute race car. Very clean all throughout. Recently had this one over to our friends at Blast Tech. They live right over there, across the, uh, across the alleyway from us. So they got that one all blasted, cleaned up. But we'll be doing all the body and paint work on this one, getting it all ready. And then this will actually be rejoining its engine down in Florida, I believe, getting ready for the next Rensport event. I want to say that one's coming up in, in middle of November, end of November, something like that. Let's see what else we got. We got the shop truck, getting ready to get a new shop truck. That's going to be nice, nice and exciting. We'll be announcing that one early next week when we go pick it up. This one is Jack's 280 SL. Uh, you can see it's sitting here because Jack's cars often fall to the wayside for customer cars, as it should be. So He picked this one up because it had a very unique color combo of this dark navy color and then it had a parchment color interior he was telling me this was a, a very rare color combination back in the day and only a few of the 280s left the factory with that color combo so when we get all finished up we'll let you know how it looks oh i didn't even realize this one is a four speed so plenty of fun he was also telling me that they do make a five speed for these 280s so that is just or a six speed i'm sorry a six speed that you can mount up to them that they just Keep that engine from revving up too much and keep you cruising away. Over there, you can see our red bubble. That is the 72 BMW 3.0 CS that had been built over at another shop here in town and then got a bit neglected. Ended up sitting out behind the shop for about a year and a half. So we're going through documents. There we are, and we're back. I apologize, Facebook decided that it knows better than me today, so we would just have to listen to the Facebook overlords. Other than that, we just finished detailing this 2018 Rolls-Royce Dawn. I was chatting with our detailer. He was telling me that the paint on Rolls-Royce, as well as most Bentleys, actually uses a bit more clear coat than most other manufacturers so it ends up being a much more um, extensive detailing job you end up going over everything almost twice to make sure everything is nice and clear with that being said we also have to work around um, the clear coating that kind of stuff not clear coating i'm sorry uh, ceramic coating keeping this one clean so right we're detailing everything all through here and then we have to be very careful Coming up to those edges on all the uh, the protection film. So, 2018 Rolls Royce Dawn. One of the real cool ones in the shop. Of course, you've got your handle right up front, and it's locked on me. So, we've got our key over there. Maybe the driver's side will be a little kinder to me. No, apparently not. Let me grab the key. Kind of cool, you got the spirit of ecstasy. Let's see if we can get it to go up and down. No? 
I've obviously dealt with many Rolls Royces and I know what I'm doing here. So you can see we've got the Spirit of Ecstasy button here. But I'm having no luck. I think this is a user error rather than a Rolls Royce error. I don't, I haven't eaten enough Grey Poupon to know. So we'll just leave that be for the time being. Take a moment to enjoy the lovely spirit of ecstasy and then we'll go from modern luxury to classic luxury this 190 sl has been a pretty extensive restoration here in the shop this one did live its entire life down in mexico uh, we were able to save the registration that kind of stuff so this is the original windshield that kind of cool touches are some of my favorite stuff we get to do here at farland so this one went through a very extensive paint all the way off down to bare body. Went through some bodywork cleanup. And now we're still hanging the accoutrement. So that stuff will all be going on soon. This one was um, recently through the upholstery stuff. You can see we've got that narrow third back seat and the lovely interior again these earlier generations also also match the dashboard to the exterior paint. cool little 190 fun facts for you all right which would you take 2018 don uh this 190 <laughs> forgive me i don't remember my year other than that we got the hudson uh we recently took this one over to the forney museum of transportation it had lived there previously for a few years Keep an eye out for our blog going up on that one. We took it back over because this was actually donated to the museum with a 1935 Chevy truck. So we reconnected the Hudson and the Chevy truck. Wanted to get those brothers back together. Let them say hello. So Getting ready to finally say goodbye to our Hudson. But absolutely one of the favorites that's been here in the shop. A real icon. Over here is the electric Porsche, the 912. This one is hanging out for now. We've got our uh, electrical technician out of town. He is up enjoying the Great Lakes. So we'll give him a little time off, let him relax, but then he'll be coming back down and jumping back on the electric. And getting this one revving to roll. We're hoping to have this one out to a few more shows here in the next few weeks. And just keep showing off all the fun we're up to here at Farland. Other than that, we've got our Lincoln Continental. You've seen this guy. The LS3, air suspension. You see we've got our soft top up, which has been quite the extensive process. We realized that the hydraulic motors in the back were having issues. We actually sent those out to have them rebuilt and I believe there was some issues with the rebuild on those so we ended up having to replace them all together which on something like this getting up there in age it is very hard to find those hydraulic motors for the uh, convertible top but it's looking good all together here just went through the detail and we'll be sending that one home soon enough plenty of stuff covered up I believe these are all Porsche parts for our lovely little 356 convertible D. The full restoration here in house. We've done absolutely everything on this one from dismantling to bodywork to replacing. When I first started, we had our metal master actually working to replace the rear and the front, as both had been in previous accidents and just wanting to clean everything up, getting it all squared away once more. Let's see, we're starting to get everything wired through, all of our labels, there's our fuse box. We'll spin around to the front. We're also hanging trim, but we've got them all taped up. Just wanting to keep everything safe and protected as we go through the assembly. That is gonna pretty much do it for us today over here in the shop. 
Uh, if you want to see what we're up to over in the showroom, go check out our most recent Instagram post. We are, we got an Instagram reel showing off all the fun that we've been up to over there. I'm trying to think. Uh, we've got the Ghibli. We've got the Montreal. We've got that cream colored 280SE. And other than that, that will just about do it for us here today at Arlen Classic Restoration. I've been Pat. Happy Farland Friday. We'll spin over to see our lovely covered Daytona. Just waiting on our technicians to get back. We've got the, the body man out as well as our electrical and wiring technician both out. So glad to wear the Porsche badge there. Keep it on brand, you know, the lovely Ferrari Porsche. No. Sometimes you end up with a car cover that isn't quite it. But for the Daytona, got to keep it covered. That is going to do it for us here today at the shop. I've been Pat. This is Fireland Friday. We'll spin around outside, get you in that Colorado sun to finish up. As always, uh, if you'd like to learn more, go check out FarlandCars.com. We also have our YouTube channel, Facebook here, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Definitely go check us out. That's going to do it for today, and we will see you next week over on Instagram. Thanks for stopping by.